Hello, Luminous Beings. Joya with Vibology here and my podcast, We Woke Up Like This. And today I want to talk about self-abandonment. So I've been on this really deep dive at this whole new level of growth. And it is really a deeper embodiment. And I feel like I've been talking about embodiment for a long time now, but this is a deeper embodiment. This is like, this is definitely the space where, where the bumping up against yourself, right? Where this is the, where this is the self that no longer serves the behaviors that no longer serve and the self that's waiting, that's waiting for you. That's calling you. And this self got to be so uncomfortable that now I've stepped into this self fully. And I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea <laughs> what's going to happen. I have no idea of, of the unfoldment that's unfolding. And I actually said that today on a call with some of my um, spiritual sisters that, you know, this isn't something that can be forced. This is something that's just unfolding. And the more that I'm finding I relax and settle into that unfolding, the less tension and stress there is, and the easier things seem to drop in and get done really fast. So, which I'm loving. I really appreciate that. And um, this thought dropped in, and this is what made me want to hop on this podcast because this deeper healing that we're in 2024 has been such the energy of bringing to consciousness all of the things, all of the thorny things about yourself that you don't want to do anymore. It's been like bringing all and the and the world, right? The whole matrix, the inner matrix and the outer matrix, because as above, so below, as within, so without. And so it's been, all of this has been revealed, revealed, revealed. And then the next question is, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Do you just stay in where you are and what you're doing, even though you know that's where you are and what you're doing? Or do you take that leap into the unknown unfolding of life? And so in that leap over on the other side of that leap is where I'm at now. I've taken the leap. And so all of these things are coming into my consciousness. I'm not going to say for healing because it's not, it doesn't feel like it's for healing so much as it is for loving. And it, it's like things that I stopped loving, things I forgot to love along the way. Maybe that's a good way to say it, right? Like little parts of myself, I forgot to love along the way, little habits I forgot to love along the way and hurts I forgot to love along the way. And so I didn't look at it with my heart open. I looked at everything rationally. And so I'm really reconciling that part of me that shut something so important inside of me down. And that was my masculine side and my beliefs around masculine energy and masculinity. And it's so funny because every card I've been drawing is healing, like what's up, what's, what's up, what's up, and it's healing the divine masculine. So that's what I've been working on in my own self is is the reclaiming of it because I just did that. I literally like put my hand up to it and was like, who needs that? Well, I need that. You need that. We all need that. <laughs> and so it's, that's been my reclaiming work over here that I'm doing this reclamation work. And in my new level of work, this new up level that I've taken, this leap that I've taken is into like this radical individuality which demands total responsibility for oneself because it's not individual individuality that's rooted in hedonism, which is like, I'm going to do whatever I want at the expense of other people. This is individuality. That's I'm going to be my truest, best self in spite of other people. They can do whatever they want. They can do what they're doing. I'm going to do what I'm, what I know is best for this higher calling, this higher vibrational, higher frequency way of being. And when we step into that higher frequency way of being, then automatically everything changes. Our relationships change. Our relationship with ourself changes first and foremost. And so I had wrote down the moment you take responsibility for your own healing is the moment your healing is activated. And this is such a big word, activated and initiated right? It's like, go, it's happening. Your nausea, your higher self is the part of yourself that lies dormant and only gets utilized to the point that you will to utilize it, that you will your will center to use it. And the more that we say thy will be done, the more that this vibrational activation begins that goes to work inside of your physical being, your physical vessel 
to bring up to the consciousness everything that's out of alignment, everything that's in dissonance, everything that is um, incoherent to that higher field, because we want to become coherent, resonant fields and be carriers of the highest frequency of the highest light that this universe contains, because we are the music made of light. And so what does this have to do with self-abandonment? has everything to do with self-abandonment because this is our soul reclamation back into our physical vessel, back into our physical body. We're disembodied from our souls and we're operating, we're running around just these talking heads on bodies. And that's dangerous as clearly we can see <laughs> in the world around us, right? And, the, and in the history of the world, that's just dangerous because then up here, it's it's all me, 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 my point of view, my perception, my world, my reality, my tribe, my beliefs, my opinions, and to hell with everybody else. That and then that that is the attitude, right? So the higher vibration of frequency is reclaiming our whole self back into our body, our soul back into our body. And so as I've been asking myself these questions about self abandonment. Actually, it was self-sabotage. And then my question was like, well, self-sabotage is the action. What drives the self-sabotage? And the answer came to me, self-abandonment. It's like, what am I doing when I'm self-sabotaging? I'm self-abandoning. Why do I self-abandon? Why do I self-abandon? And that's a really deep question. And so I have dug into that for us. And I want to talk about what self-abandonment is and a little checklist so you can see if this is what you've been doing to you too. And so you can get busy now, once you're aware of it, that you can get busy reclaiming the self you were supposed to be, the self you are meant to be, the self you are dying to be. So self-abandonment occurs when a person neglects their own needs, desires, emotions, and boundaries in favor of another's expectations or approval. It involves disconnecting from the true self in order to conform, avoid conflict, seek validation, or fit in with your tribe. And it leads to a loss of identity and emotional well-being. When you abandon yourself, you suppress your authentic self, the person you weren't allowed to be, because that version of you was not validated, accepted, or encouraged. Reclaiming the self you weren't allowed to be is about reconnecting with your true desires your values, your emotions, and learning to honor them instead of abandoning them for the sake of others. Now, this is how we learned to do it when we were young, because we have to abandon what we want, how we feel, what we think, us to belong in this group, to belong in this tribe, to keep the peace and to play the role that my family decided I'm here to play. And so as adults, we have, we get stuck in these patterns of behavior that are driving us unconsciously because remember the body is the unconscious mind. So all of your griefs, all of your angers, everything is stored in here in the body, which is why embodiment is so important. So we can clear that stuff out. And of course, my favorite tool is voice and sound. We self-abandon every time we question ourselves. We self-abandon every time we decide to hurt ourselves when we are doing great. We self-abandon when we self-sabotage. There's a lot of ways to self-abandon. And so here's the ways that we do it. Here's a checklist for you. Are you self-abandoning? Number one, are you neglecting your own needs? You are consistently putting other needs, others' needs before your own, often at the expense of your own well-being. You ignore your hunger, tiredness, or emotional exhaustion to meet others' demands. Or you feel guilty or selfish if you prioritize your self-care or time out for you. Number two, are you suppressing your emotions? Do you have a habit of ignoring or downplaying your feelings because you believe they're not important or they'll inconvenience other people? Do you feel uncomfortable expressing sadness, anger, or disappointment, and instead you try to keep the peace? Or you often say, I'm fine, or it's not a big deal, even though inside you're really struggling. Number three is people pleasing. You frequently say yes to things you don't want to do because you're afraid of letting others down. You prioritize others' approval over your own happiness, often changing your behavior or opinions to fit in and be accepted. Or you seek validation from others and feel anxious when you don't receive it. Number four, you have difficulty setting boundaries. You struggle to set boundaries or say no, even doing when doing so will 
protect your time, energy, and emotional well-being. You feel guilty or anxious when you try to establish boundaries, worrying that people will get upset or abandon you. You tolerate behavior from others that makes you uncomfortable or unhappy because you fear conflict or rejection. Number five, you lose yourself in relationships. You tend to adapt or mold yourself to fit in with what others want, losing touch with your own preferences, desires, or identity. You find yourself going along with others' opinions, plans, or values, even when they don't align with your true self. Or you feel responsible for others' emotions and often take on the role of the caretaker or the fixer in your relationships. Number six, avoiding your true desires. You struggle to know what you actually want in life, work, or relationships because you've been focused on fulfilling others' expectations. When you do recognize a desire or goal, you often dismiss it as unrealistic or unimportant because it doesn't align with what others want for you. You find yourself constantly deferring your dreams or putting your passions on hold for other people. Number seven, constant self-criticism. You have an inner voice that frequently tells you you're not good enough, smart enough, or capable enough. You beat yourself up over mistakes or perceived flaws, often holding yourself to impossibly high standards. Or you rarely acknowledge your achievements or successes, downplaying them as luck or no big deal. Number eight, overworking or overcommitting. You tend to overextend yourself in work, social obligations, or personal responsibilities, leaving little room for rest or self-care. You say yes to too many tasks because you feel like you have to prove your worth through productivity or helping others. You rarely take time to rest or relax because you feel guilty or anxious when you're not being useful. Number nine is avoiding conflict. You avoid confronting issues in relationships because you fear upsetting others or causing discomfort. You downplay or hide your true feelings to keep the peace, even when it's something deeply bothering you. Or you often agree with others, even when you disagree internally, because it feels safer than risking conflict. Number 10, you're disconnected from your body. You feel out of touch with your physical sensations, ignoring signals like hunger, fatigue, or discomfort. You use distractions like food, alcohol, work, technology, or sex to avoid dealing with physical or emotional discomfort. Or you rarely check in with your body or pay attention to what it's trying to tell you about your own needs and emotions. 11 is feeling lost or disconnected from your purpose. You often feel like you're drifting through life without a clear sense of direction or purpose. You struggle to make decisions because you're unsure of what you truly want or need. You feel disconnected from your passions, creativity, or sense of meaning, unsure of what would bring you fulfillment. Number 12, you're overly accommodating. You frequently adjust your behavior, plans, or opinions to accommodate others, even when it goes against what you want or need. You minimize your own discomfort or needs in order to make others more comfortable, or you feel uncomfortable asserting your preferences, fearing rejection or criticism. So that's a pretty long list there. And I definitely recognized myself in a lot of those with self-abandoning. And so some of the questions that we can ask ourselves now is how often do I prioritize myself over others? Do I prioritize my own self-care and my needs? When was the last time I listened to and honored my own emotions, needs, and desires? What am I afraid might happen if I start prioritizing myself? And do I know what my boundaries are and do I feel confident in setting them? Our boundaries exist internally and externally. We set boundaries for ourselves too. So how do you heal from self-abandonment if this is you? Number one is your awareness. You have to start by noticing where and when and how you're abandoning yourself. Awareness is always the first step to change. You can't change anything you're not aware of. So in those moments when you're going to self-sabotage, when you're going to do the thing that you say you don't want to do anymore or not do the thing you say you do want to do, check in with that awareness and ask yourself if you're abandoning yourself, are you abandoning what you really want? Reconnect with your needs. Set a daily intention to check in and ask, what do I need right now? Listening to your body and your emotions. I do that with sound every day. What sound do I need to make right now? And we're going to do that at the end of this talk. Practice self-compassion. 
Be kind to yourself when you notice patterns of self-abandonment. Speak to yourself as you would a close friend. The meta prayer is so wonderful for that. May I love myself. May I respect myself. May I honor myself. May I trust myself. May I love myself or whatever else fits in there for you. Set boundaries. Start by setting one small boundary a day that you don't cross and that you don't let others cross with you. Practice saying no when something doesn't feel right without explaining yourself. And ladies, please stop apologizing. Just say no. <laughs> you don't have to explain yourself and you don't have to apologize for your no. Self-validation. Learn to give yourself the approval and validation you are seeking from others. Affirm that you're worthy and enough simply as you are. And I think it's Mel Robbins who has the high five yourself in the mirror thing. High five. I give myself a little pat on the back. I'm like, good job. I'm like, good job. Or I'll give myself a hug. Oh, I love you. Like those little things go a long way for self-validation. And then of course your expression, honestly express yourself, use your voice to express your needs, your feelings, and your desires. Start small, like vocalizing your needs in a mirror if you need to, before you can vocalize them to anybody else in person, because it can be really uncomfortable when you first start doing it. And then of course, Instead of self-sabotaging, how do we get over that leap? How do we take that energetic leap from here, I'm stuck and I can't get out of this sabotage loop. Something is taking over me versus here where I know I want to be, even though I don't know what's over there. How do I get there? And the answer is your voice. You can sound out that energy. So I've ha I have lots of videos on it, but we can do a super simple sounding practice. Now you could just check in with your body and feel like when you have that moment that you're stuck, you can just ask your body, what sound do you want to make? What sound needs to come out of me at this moment to bring me into coherence with this self over here that's calling me forward? What can I do? What actions can I take? to bring myself into coherence with that self that's calling me forward. How can I do it? And then sound it out. How can I sound it out of me? And I actually had a lovely little song drop in earlier. So why don't I just sing that instead of toning? Cause I have so many videos on that and you can go back and watch them if you want. I think I have a toning yourself from self-sabotage video already on here. So I highly recommend you watch that. But for now, let's just play, I'm going to play this beautiful little song that dropped into me today. And it's, I'll be right back with my drum.
little fun, spontaneous song jam there for you. So, my loves, 2025 energy I'm so excited for because, yes, it's going to be so much more of this ripping everything out of the closet. I call it the messy middle, right? Before we before we know what we're going to keep in our closet, we got to pull it all out and look at it. And that's what's been happening. That's what's going to keep happening. And we are also being called to, now that you see it, take radical responsibility for it. Take responsibility for yourself and step into it and just trust. That's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing in this space of not knowing and being okay with that. Because as my favorite poet said, what you can plan for your life is too small for you. What you can plan for your life is too small for you. As you awaken yourself, you awaken the world. See you soon. Mwah.